Welcome back to Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. We're back today with a follow up video on this blower motor that we removed from a Nissan NV3500. We had a request from a good viewer of mine to pop it open and see if we could see anything that's obvious that potentially caused this one to fail. I'm going to start by removing these four Phillips head screws. All right, let's see if this will just pop off. All right, well, I see there's a stink bug. Maybe he's shortening it out. I doubt that. But what I did notice right away when I popped the lid off is it appears to be some kind of slag from the solder joint. I'll get rid of this guy. Woo! Did you see that? My capacitor there is charged up. We just discharged it. What I'm seeing here is a failed solder joint. Looks like it's spring-loaded. So as soon as that thing heated up, let's see if I could. All right. Looks like we have our aluminum fins down here. It'd probably get cooled off by the blower. Um, these are appear to be spot welded on. I can't remove the control board with them in place. see where looking underneath it looks like we have another capacitor here um, not seeing anything like standing out at me as far as something burned off the board like we have this bad solder joint here I wonder if this is always like ready to pop off as soon as it overheats or if that's just the nature of the way it was assembled I wonder if I take and clean up that solder joint. It's not cleaning up pretty good. Some of this did melt over, so I'll just heat it up and pull it back up where it belongs. Looks like the surrounding area cleaned up pretty good. I wicked it up as good as I get it. And I'm not expecting this to be a 100% fix or anything like that, so. Something definitely caused it to fail in the way it did. Let's move side around there. All right. Now we have her all reattached. Should be good. Just in case we couldn't see, all three of these are soldered back together in addition to that guy there. Um, now I'm gonna hook up a power supply. All right, so what side's ground? So what I'm gonna do is look at this capacitor here. It's the ground side of it. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so this is the ground side. So we're gonna hook that up to ground. Let's power this bad boy on. This is a power supply. I gotta set the 12 volts ready. So I don't want this taken off on me right away just in case it's shorted out. Alright, so I'm gonna stick that on there, like so, but now we know we need a control of some sort. What I'll do for now is I'll get a test light. So the test light will kind of protect it. 
I'm doing something too outrageous, but I'm gonna take this test light if I touch ground, as you see, it puts it up. But I'm gonna just, all right, so that does not turn it on and off. So we're gonna touch ground. Oh, -ho. look at that. Interesting, so. So as you've seen there, what I was watching for, and that's why I use the test light so I don't short anything out. Um, it'll just light the bulb if it's shorted, you know. Now we know the control is a ground side switch, right, of some sort. I got a couple leads I made up to try to make life a little bit easier for this demonstration. We got our sensor simulator. We got our power supply. So first we're going to take and set our amps on our power supply. It looks like we're at two amps right now and I could crank it up to 10. Um, I believe this is on a 20 amp circuit. So if I'm not mistaken, maybe a 30. We're gonna hook up our sensor simulator. I'm gonna be simulating a ground. So I'm gonna hook this up to ground. This is gonna to go to our center control wire. I won't hook that up yet. Um, top is ground, so we want that. Hook up to ground. Uh, bottom's positive, so we'll hook that up to positive. It's already sitting at 0 0.15 amps. Okay, we're gonna hook up our simulator. That's gonna go to our control wire. Okay. Now I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not. I'll try to keep you guys in the frame, but we're gonna look up a simulator here. We're gonna go square wave. Oh, got movement. All right, so I'm gonna add to this. Turn it down a little bit. I want to see at what point. Alright. The only reason that shut off is because it went over 10 amps. So it seems like somewhere between 152 hertz, as soon as I go to 153, she's like full speed ahead. What if I go wide open? Ah, there you go. All right, so the tighter the square wave, the slower the speed. The 600 hertz is as high as I could go. Woo, as soon as we get below 300. She wants to go into high speed, I guess, but anyways, I get to run constantly at 600 hertz. So, whether or not this would work if I put it in the vehicle, I do not know. But what we do know that we found a bad solder joint and that's pretty much all we fixed inside of it and the unit does run all right guys well i'm not i'm not sure if you guys are going to find that video helpful or not we pulled apart the blower motor we seen that a solder joint had let loose and uh looked like it overheated but we took it apart, made sure we didn't see any other obvious failures. We re-soldered that joint, put our cut connections back together. We tested it out using the sensor simulator. We were able to confirm that the motor is operational once again, whether or not it's at peak performance or it's doing what it should. I have no, I have no way to really control it like it can inside the vehicle. Um, and I no longer have that vehicle to test out the theory. 
But one down for science, I guess you could say, for our viewers. I appreciate you guys, and thank you for the recommendation. Whether that would buy you some more time or not, or if it's just simply a sign that something is drawing too much current, maybe that motor is just shot, it feels fine. It's not because of a binding load. Um, what if your air was restricted and it was overheating? That could be a problem as well. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of future videos. Until next time, stay tuned.